Registered Phenomena Code 319 Object Class Omega Purple Hazard Types Aggression Hazard Animated Hazard Grouped Hazard Regenerative Hazard Replicating Hazard Sapient Hazard Teleportation Hazard Memory Alteration Hazard Containment Protocols Due to the size of the area under its effects, and the extent of its anomalous capabilities, RPC-319 is considered uncontainable. See Previous Containment Protocols 319-25. UNAAC, the FOA, MI-13, and all other Allied organizations are to be briefed on the possible dangers associated with RPC-319. Currently, all Authority efforts are to focus on tracking the entity's manifestations subverting any evidence of the entity's existence and the containment or termination of its anomalous creations. MST-Alpha-03 scavengers and X-Ray-06 nullifiers are to remain on call 24-7 through the month of December to respond to manifestations and to administer Class A-3 amnestics to any civilians exposed to RPC-319 or its effects, as well as falsifying all deaths attributed to RPC-319 as natural or non-anomalous in nature. Hotel-01 Highlanders have been tasked with combating and containing RPC-319's various anomalous creations. These entities, designated as RPC-319-1 through-3, are to be contained at Site-074 within Sector C's Gamma-level containment wing. Their containment protocols are as follows. RPC-319-1 instances are to be held within an airtight humanoid containment cell equipped with an industrial-grade dehumidifier. These instances are not to be held with more than five per container. Researchers are not to interact with RPC-319-1 under any circumstance outside of testing. RPC-319-2 instances are to be held in a 10m by 12m by 6m reinforced modified humanoid containment cell. The cell is to be equipped with an industrial-grade dehumidifier and standard video surveillance cameras. Staff are to inspect the cell bi-weekly for damages caused by Dash-2 instances. RPC-319-3 is to be contained within a 15m by 20m by 15m reinforced Class IV gamma-level containment chamber, equipped with a gravimetric hygrometer. Humidity within the cell is to be monitored hourly by site personnel and any humidity reading above 0.5 grams per cubic meter is to be reported to the head of containment, Dr. Isaac. In addition, the cell floor is to be fitted with a secondary chamber equipped with a primary feeder air source and three 99kW diesel burners. If RPC-319-3 enters an agitated state, a heavy weapons ASF detachment is to immediately respond and the cell's internal temperatures is to be raised until the entity returns to a non-active state. In the event of a containment breach, in which termination of instances via incineration is not viable, ASF personnel are to engage the instances with anti-material rounds and explosives. Site staff are then to be instructed to partially eat the remains to fully ensure the destruction of an instance. Previous Containment Protocols 319-25 RPC-319 is currently considered contained through the means of Protocol 31912-25-SUS. From December 13 through the 24th, surveillance teams from Site-074 are to pick households within RPC-319's area of effect that matches its preferred targets. Teams must then monitor them for RPC-319 manifestations. Once manifestations have begun, Site Director will choose at least three households and instruct teams to induce accelerated weight gain in the children of the specified houses. On the night of the 24th, before RPC-319 is manifested, Authority personnel are to swap out the children in these homes with sus domesticus similar in weight. ASF containment teams and research personnel are to remain near the household on the final night until RPC-319 demanifests in order to contain or terminate any RPC-319-1 or-2 instances left behind. Children must then be returned to their families and administered Class A-3 amnestics. Attention. Note from the head of Anomaly Containment Westcom. 
These initial containment protocols operated under the belief that RPC-319 was an anomalous phenomenon rather than a separate entity of its own volition. Following Incident 319-25 and the creation of RPC-319-3, the Authority has revised these containment protocols. Caution is advised when making assumptions on the anomalous. Even in the attempt to save lives, we do not know the world in such simple terms. Description. RPC-319 is currently believed to be a humanoid entity of unknown origin. Manifestations of RPC-319 initially appear as a female in her late 70s with an abdominous build and gray-white hair. However, an instance's appearance has been known to change later in its manifestations. These changes have been noted as a shift in the eye's composition to include horizontal slit-shaped pupils, the addition of two to eight branched horns, and severe Ginu recurvatum. The extent of RPC-319's shapeshifting abilities is currently being tested. Manifestations of RPC-319 occur only once per year from December 13th through the 24th or Yuletide. During this time, the entity enters an active state in which it is capable of manifesting or traveling near instantaneously throughout Central and Eastern Europe, which is believed to be its area of influence. Specifically, RPC-319 has only been observed as far west as the Rhineland and east along the Volga River. Researchers do not currently know how RPC-319 is capable of this, but it has never been observed outside this area of effect. During this active state, RPC-319 will manifest within several homes, which all display various Christmas decorations and are inhabited by a conjugal family. These families must have Trinitarian Christian religious beliefs. Once manifestations have begun, RPC-319 will appear before the occupants of the home during any evening meal. The home's denizens will all immediately remark that Grandma is home and show signs of familiarity with the entity. RPC-319 is, however, incapable of human speech. Instead, it appears to communicate through a mixture of animalistic growls, bellows, snorts, and screams. Those communicating with the entity appear to understand these vocalizations and have been observed carrying on complete conversations. Manifestations will appear within several homes throughout the European continent each evening. Researchers have observed unusual weight gain by each member of the family during this time. On the night of December 24, RPC-319 will manifest in only a single home that it had previously manifested in and begin to vomit raw gingerbread dough into the family's oven or a similar apparatus. Several RPC-319-1 and-2 instances will begin to grow from the oven dough in a form of budding reproduction. During this event, RPC-319 takes on aspects of its less human appearance. RPC-319 will then offer the family portions ripped from the Dash-1 and Dash-2 instances, who then surround the dinner table. The family will show signs of extreme joy and delight at Grandma's feast, and eat for hours on end despite its ill effects. Once local time reaches midnight, RPC-319 will devour the still-delighted children of the family and demanifest. Presently, due to Incident 319-25, the Authority considers RPC-319 a Class IV aggressive anomalous threat. The entity's capabilities so far are immeasurable, from its unknown capacity of creation to its physical form appearing within any space inside its area of influence. As such, UNAAC alongside the Authority have begun to assemble a specialized multinational task force to respond to this threat. Classification and assembly of Task Force Altanacht is currently pending approval. Addendum 31984-01 Anomalous Creations RPC-319 is a secondary anomalous trait in which it is able to create animated constructs comprised of various sugary confections. These creations are formed from primarily baked goods consisting of flavored ginger, cinnamon, honey, and sugar or more commonly known as gingerbread. In addition to this, these constructs also contain extremely detailed, non-functioning anatomy. Research personnel have performed several autopsies on inert RPC-319-1 and-2 instances to better understand the intricacies of their anatomical structures. They have, to date, been able to identify licorice intestines, caramel-filled stomach cavities, 
peppermint sugar stick bone structure, baked marzipan hair, dark chocolate brain, pectin based gummy candy eyes and other soft tissues, and chewing gum lungs. Theories have also been suggested that irregular sugar structures observed inside each confection may act as some sort of non functioning nervous system. Researchers have also discovered that consumption of RPC-319's confections have no anomalous adverse effects. All variations of RPC-319-1, Dash 2, and Dash 3 are capable of repairing themselves in other instances using a form of royal icing, which they produce from their mouths. This substance is not found in large quantities inside the instances, and is believed to be produced by unknown means as a response to trauma. Instances have been observed healing from various wounds using this substance. Using help from primarily RPC-319-1, they appear able to rebuild each other even when over 60% of their mass have been broken down or destroyed. As such, the consumption of pieces broken off from instances which have lost their anomalous durability appears to be the most efficient form of termination. Instances have also shown an acute weakness to heat and a lack of humidity which makes the entities more docile and dries out their composition. Once dried out, they become more brittle and are more easily susceptible to damage. Instances appear to be unable to manifest and demanifest when RPC-319 and as such their behavior changes drastically when not near the entity. While in the presence of RPC-319, instances behave notably more docile. Awaiting command from RPC-319 appears to be their primary function. While not in RPC-319's presence, however, instances quickly become more animalistic and begin to form packs. These packs will roam and attack any living creature they see and attempt to consume them with their non-functioning mouths. RPC-319-1 solely takes the shape of a 178cm tall adult male. While instances are consistent between their size and shape, they vary between the types of gingerbread they are constructed from. Most appear to be comprised of a condensed biscuit-like bread, although some appear to be formed from white gingerbread. Despite the non-anomalous nature of the ingredients used to create RPC-319-1, the gingerbread has shown remarkable durability against trauma. Durability varies slightly between instances and gingerbread consistencies but each type has shown a resistance up to an intermediate small orange fire. RPC-319-1 are not capable of speech but have been observed using squad tactics in combat. This has led researchers to believe that instances may be able to communicate by other anomalous means. RPC-319-2 instances share many similarities structure-wise with their Dash-1 counterparts. However, they take on the appearance of a male Rangifer Tyrandus Finicus. Due to their size and weight, approximately 200 kg in weight, 200 cm long and 152 cm in height, they are much more dangerous than their Dash-1 counterparts. They are most notably distinguishable anatomically from Rangifer Tyrannus finicus by the long, sharp canine-like teeth formed from peppermint candy canes. RPC-319-3 is a 4.5 meter tall humanoid gingerbread entity weighing approximately 1 metric ton. Its anatomy differs greatly from other previous instances and does not appear to be based on any known existing animal or creature. Most notably, RPC-319-3 is an anatomical bone structure similar to other digigrades in its hind legs, allowing it to move quickly and silently. Its upper body is much more in line with that of its Dash-1 counterparts. It mainly differs in the formation of its three-digit hands, which are equipped with 15cm candy cane claws. Unlike previous iterations that only use candy canes or other sugar stick confections as their bone replacement, RPC-319-3's bones, including its claws, teeth, and horns, are covered with black licorice. Wounds caused by these black licorice appendages immediately produce acute licorice poisoning in its victims. RPC-319-3's face resembles a human face with exaggerated sunken features and pronounced 10cm canines. Its head is adorned with two one-meter-long forward-sloping hardened black licorice horns. The gingerbread at RPC-319-3 consists of is a darker molasses-based composition. This type has proven to be the most resilient cl-
This type has proven to be the most resilient class of gingerbread among all the instances. Additionally, its outer layer is covered with a mixture of spun sugar and royal icing, which gives off a fuzzy appearance white in color and further protects the entity from outside trauma. RPC-319-3 is hyper-aggressive even when compared to other instances. It has immense strength and has been observed moving at speeds up to 90 km per hour, as well as utilizing ambush tactics and camouflaging itself against the white snow. RPC-319-3 is also shown to be dominant of other over-instances who have been observed aiding it in combat. RPC-319-3 was created during Incident 319-25, in which it was responsible for an approximate death of civilians and Authority personnel. Incident 319-25 On December 24, 19 while attempting to complete Protocol 31912-25-SUS in Germany, RPC-319 was observed acting erratically in behavior compared to prior protocol completions. After attempting to consume the SUS domesticus, RPC-319 stopped and began to enter an aggressive state. During this state, it donned a form less human than previously observed and began screeching as it created several more RPC-319-1 instances. ASF teams were ordered to immediately respond to the event as the entities became violent. ASF and containment personnel were immediately overwhelmed upon RPC-319-3's creation. Following its creation, RPC-319-D manifested from the area. Teams were unable to observe the creation of RPC-319-3 directly due to the chaos of the events. As it demanifested, a massive containment breach occurred at Site-074, as all containment cells opened simultaneously. RPC-319 was observed on several surveillance cameras throughout the facility during the breach. Due in part to the relatively low amount of anomalies stored at the site, and its useful Theta anomalies, the breach was contained quickly and with only fatalities and the destruction of RPC. However, all local authority and allied assets had to be quickly dispatched in order to contain RPC-319-3. FLA Vosk-02, RPC-940, and MST Hotel-01 Highlanders were engaged in combat with the instances for several hours and sustained heavy casualties before temporarily subduing the entity. Following the incident, Class A-1 amnestics were dispersed throughout the area by aerial means. All deaths associated with the event were attributed to inclement weather alongside an electrical fire. Site Director was reported missing from his office following the breach. He, alongside several other containment specialists, had been responsible for the implementation of Protocol 31912-25-SUS. ASF personnel stationed outside of the Director's office were all found dead and partially devoured. Though the Director's body was not found among them, the only clue found about its disappearance was a single handwritten note, believed to have been written by RPC-319, found on his desk. See Figure 3. Currently, investigation into the matter are ongoing. Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the site, not a creature was stirring, as all were afright. The guards were hung in an office for care, in hopes that he and my sister soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in my insides, their visions and nightmares danced as they collide. And the director in his coat, and I in my cap, were about to meet, don't worry, I'll be done in a snap. When out in the cells there arose such a clatter, the staff sprang to life to see what was the matter. Away to their screens they flew like a flash. Torn open the doors into their abash, the waning moon breast of the new fallen snow showed the objects all free from their cells below, when what to their wandering eyes did appear, but I among them with each of my dear. Everything free and embarrassed avenged, they knew not to fret and to amend. They heard me exclaim, ere I jumped out of sight, happy feast for all, and I eat for delight. <laughs>